Hello friends, welcome back to our channel. In today's session, we'll see a one more concept in discrete mathematics that is types of relations. So in our previous session, we have discussed about what is a relation and how can we define a relation, right? So a relation can be defined between a same set or a different set. So that we have seen in our uh, previous session. Now we'll see what are the different types of relations. So let's start the session. Types of relations. So the first one is an empty relation. So first of all, let us recall what is a relation. Relation means a relationship between the elements of the same set or a different sets. So the first category is empty relation empty relation so when we call it as an empty relation so if there is no mapping between the elements of a set so there should be some sort of relationship or some sort of mapping between the elements of different set or same set so mapping there is no mapping between the elements of a set that may be either same or different set is known as empty relation empty relation so usually that will be represented as represented as null Okay, null. Null means zero elements. And the second one, universal relation. Universal relation. So this universal relation means we said that the if any kind of relation will be a subset of a Cartesian product of sets, right? So that particular Cartesian product of a set is called as a universal relation. So Cartesian product between sets is universal relation. So any relation, if you consider any relation, that will be the subset of this universal relation that means every element of a set is mapped with every element of other set so every element of set is mapped you can say either mapped or relation right is mapped with every element of another set another set for example yes one is so one comma two and s2 is three comma four then universal set r is equal to the cartesian product you know that the relation will be represented as a pair of elements one first element will belongs to one set and one more another element belongs to another set right so here you can see every element of one set is mapped with every other element of another set so 1 comma 3 1 comma 4 so every element of set 1 is mapped with every element of set 2 so 1 comma 3 1 comma 4 similarly 2 comma 3 2 comma 4 so this is the universal relation this is a universal relation right so simply we can say it is a cartesian product it is a Cartesian product, right? So even though if we are having only one set, if we are having only one set, then Cartesian product relation will be yes into yes. Okay, every element of yes is mapped with every element of another yes. So these are the two types: empty relation with no mapping, and one more universal relation, right? Cartesian product. Then the next one. Identity relation. Identity 
identity relation so what is this identity relation so every element of set is mapped with only that element itself is called as a identity relation so every element of a set is mapped with only itself only itself right is called as an identity right for example let us take if the relation is in this way so 1 comma 1 2 comma 2 or 3 comma 3 so you can observe if you observe this one, 1 is mapped with 1, 2 is mapped with 2, 3 is mapped with 3. That means 1 element is mapped with itself only. Okay, 1 element is mapped with itself only. Then, then we can say it as identity relation. See, this is most important. Mapped with only itself. Only itself. So there is a next category which is similar to identity. It's a reflexive reflexive relation so here any element mapped with itself is called reflexive see just observe it seems both the definitions are similar both the definition, definitions are similar. Every element of a set is mapped with only itself and any element mapped with itself is called a reflexive. Here you can see if the re relation is in this way 1 comma 1, 1 comma 2, 2 comma 2, 2 comma 3, 3 comma 3. So if the relation is in this way, so this is a reflexive but this is not identity why because here see is mapped with only itself so one one should be mapped with only one if there is any pair of element like one comma two this doesn't be becomes the identity relation but this becomes reflexive relation so apart from these particular pair of elements that can be mapped with any other elements also so any element mapped with itself is called as a reflexive. So 1 comma 1, 2 comma 2, 3 comma 3. So 1 is there which is mapped with 1, 2 is there which is mapped with 2, 3 is there which is mapped with 3. Apart from that, 1 is mapped with 2 and 2 is also mapped with 3. That doesn't matter, right? So it only sees that if the element of A or if the element of set is mapped with itself, then we can say it as a reflexive. Here you see, in this example, it should be mapped with only itself. It should not map with any other element. That is called as an identity. Hope you understood the difference between identity and a reflexive. Right? So, let's move on to the next one. Inverse relation. Inverse relation. So here the inverse relation means inverse of the pair. Okay, we are having a pair in the relation. If there is an inverse, then we can say it as an inverse relation. See, so if a comma b belongs to R, that means a comma b is a pair of elements belongs to a relation R. And the inverse of a comma b, that means b comma a, also belongs to R. Then it is inverse relation. Then it is inverse relation. So a comma b, that means a pair of elements. A comma b belongs to R, and similarly b comma a also belongs to R. That means inverse. Then we can say it as an inverse. For example, if a relation is having in this way. 1 comma 2, 2 comma 1, 3 comma 1, 
1 comma 3 you can see this is an inverse relation so 1 comma 2 what is the inverse of 1 comma 2 2 comma 1 2 2 comma 1 is also available 3 comma 1 so what is the inverse of 3 comma 1 1 comma 3 this is also available so we can say it as an inverse relation so whenever a comma b belongs to r then immediately b comma a should also belongs to r right and similarly anti-symmetric so this is also known as a symmetric relation symmetric relation symmetric or relation is also similar symmetric relation symmetric relation means if a comma b belongs to r and b comma a also belongs to r then it is also called as a symmetric relation and anti-symmetric relation anti-symmetric relation means so a relation is said to be anti-symmetric in two different cases in two different cases so if a comma b belongs to r then b comma a belongs to r only if a is equal to b if a is equal to b and similarly if a comma b belongs to r then b comma a should not belongs to r only if a not equal to if a not equal to b the inverse of this particular pair should not belongs to r so for example if relation is in this way 1 comma 1 1 comma 2 2 comma 1 2 comma 2 3 comma 3 so you can observe this one so this will be 1 comma 1 means the reverse is also 1 comma 1 which belongs to r right yes this is satisfied 1 comma 2 so both are different a not equal to b if a if, if you consider this as a comma b so in this case a not equal to b so b comma a should not belongs to r but here b comma a belongs to r so this is not a anti-symmetric relation it is a symmetric relation it is a symmetric relation it's not an anti-symmetric relation so just remember these two things these two things if a comma b belongs to r then b comma a should be belongs to r only if a is equal to b that means if a and b are equal then only it should be belongs to the relation and similarly a comma b belongs to r then b comma a should not belong to r if a not equal to b so this is called an anti-symmetric relation anti-symmetric relation right so hope you understood this one uh, inverse relation or a symmetric relation and similarly anti-symmetric relation anti-symmetric relation right yes so we have seen the next one is a transitive relation one more relation is there it's a transitive relation let us see what is that transitive transitive relation so a relation of a set is said to be a transitive if a comma b belongs to r and b comma c also belongs to r then a comma c should also belongs to r such type of relation we call it as a transitive relation for example if relation is having in this way 1 comma 1 1 comma 2 2 comma 3 1 comma 3 you can observe 1 comma 1 1 comma 2 so this is a b consider b c so a c will be 1 comma 2 yes it is there next 1 comma 2 let it be a b 2 comma 3 let it be b c so automatically 1 comma 3 which is available here 
So this kind of relation we call it as a transitive relation. Transitive relation, right? So these are all the different types of relations. Different types of relations. So we have seen the empty relation, inverse relation, uh, universal relation, reflexive relation, identity relation, symmetric relation, asymmetric relation. And finally, the transitive relation. All right. So, hope you understood these types of relations. And two more types of relations are there. One is an equivalence relation and a partial ordering relation. So, we will see those two things in our next session. So, let's stop here. Hope you understood these uh, types of relations. And if you are having any doubts regarding this one, feel free to post your doubts in the comment section. Definitely, I will try to clarify all your doubts. If you really enjoyed my session, like my session, share my session with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching. Thank you very much.